Hi everybody, it's now July 26th, Sunday, and it's good to see you again. We're really excited about today's story. Last week we had Samson, and today we have one of the most dedicated women in the Bible. I have great respect for this woman. She gave up everything, and God gave her everything. All right, let's get started. It's time for our story. It's still the time of the judges. There were 14 judges total. After Moses and Joshua died, there were 14 different judges. And last week, as I said, we, we studied Samson. And before we get to the last two judges, uh, we're going to get into this special story. There's a book in the Bible called Ruth. It's only four chapters. But it's a very important little book. The story is about a man named Elimelech. He was a Hebrew man and a family. And the time he lived, there was a big famine, a very bad famine. Do you remember what that is? A famine it means there's no food. People are starving. So Elimelech took his wife Naomi and their two sons, Malan and Chilion, and they moved from Israel. They went to Moab. There seemed to be more food in the country of Moab. So they dwelt in Moab, and over time, Chilion and Milan married two Moabite women. One was Ruth, and the other was Orpah. As time went on, Elimelech died, and so did Chilion and Milan. That left three women without husbands. They were all widows now. Naomi she blamed God at this time. She didn't realize there was a plan. But she blamed God for all the bad things in her life. And so she was going to return home to Israel. She had nothing else to do. And she told her two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, go back home to your families. I have nothing for you. I can't have another baby. Uh, I'm not even married. I have to, I, I've got nothing for you. Go home. But Ruth and Orpah loved Naomi, and they wanted to go with her. Orpah kissed Naomi and went back to her family, to her people, to her gods. But Ruth, this is very important. One of my most favorite scriptures in the whole Bible comes from what Ruth said. Ruth clung to Naomi. She hugged her and held her and said to Naomi, Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. This is a very famous scripture in Ruth chapter 1. And I can remember a wedding in this church where the bride said those exact words to her husband-to-be as Pastor Bud was, was presiding over the marriage ceremony. It was his daughter, Katie, and his son-in-law, Cobb. When they got married, Katie pledged this pledge that Ruth gave to Naomi. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. That is the ultimate giving of a person on this earth. Totally giving. Well, Naomi and Ruth went to Israel. And as I said, Naomi blamed God for her problems. And when she got to Israel, people said, Oh, Naomi, you've been gone for 10 years. And Naomi said, Don't call me that name. Call me Mara. For God has not been good to us. At this time, it was time for the harvest. And in the Old Testament, there, the law, God provided for the poor people. When uh, a rich family or anybody that had lots of land, they grew crops, and they went out to harvest the crops, God said, don't pick up every scrap. If you drop scraps, let them be. Let the poor people come in and glean or pick up the scraps because they have nothing else to eat. In this way, God provided for the poor people. 
So Ruth decided she would glean in the fields where Naomi was living. So one day she went out to glean. And as she was gleaning, the owner of the field looked up and said, Who is that woman? And someone said, It's Naomi's daughter-in-law, Ruth. Boaz went to Ruth and said, Do not glean anywhere else. Stay here by my young women, by my workers. Drink from the vessels that my workers have. Stay here. Come all the time. And Ruth was totally amazed. Oh, she bowed down before this man. His name was Boaz. She bowed down before him and said, Well, why are you being so nice to me? How have I found favor in your sight? I'm a foreigner, remember? Boaz said to her, I found out, it was reported to me, that you have helped your mother-in-law, Naomi. You have left your home, left everything that you knew to go to a new land. And I want you to be taken care of here. So stay by my workers and glean as much as you like. When Ruth finished, she went home to Naomi. And Naomi was surprised. You have so much grain. How did you get so much today? And then Ruth told her about this man that was so nice to her. Naomi said, continue to go here the whole harvest season. So Ruth gleaned day after day, getting enough food for Naomi and her to survive. At the end of the harvest season, it was time to winnow or thresh the wheat and to make it good for saving up and eating. And Naomi said to Ruth, Boaz is a close relative of mine. And in the Bible, a close relative has responsibilities to take care of anyone he's related to. If they become a widow, then he needs to take care of them. So Naomi told Ruth, wait until after he has finished working in the threshing place. And then when he's fallen asleep, go in and lay at his feet. When he wakes up and sees you at the end of his feet, then tell him you're a close relative and you want him to cover you. This is a custom in the Bible for Hebrews. So Ruth obeyed her mother-in-law. And when Boaz and his men had finished threshing or winnowing his wheat, his barley, he laid down to sleep. And in the middle of the night, he woke up and found a woman at his feet. And he said, what are you doing here? Ruth woke up and said, I am a close woman in your family. Please cover me. And Boaz realized what she was saying. And Boaz said to her, I will marry you. I will take care of you. But first, there is one other relative I have to go to. He has first uh, priority over me to marry you. So let me go talk to him. And after I've cleared this up, I will come and marry you. So Ruth went home to Naomi and they waited. And then Boaz went to the city council. He went to the elders of the city and sat down with his relative and explained to him that he would like to marry Ruth unless the other relative wanted to. The other relative said, no, I have other obligations. I'm getting married to somebody else. So Boaz took off his sandal and gave it to his relative. And this was a sign that the deal had been made in front of all the elders. Everyone witnessed this. So Boaz came back and told Ruth that they can get married. So Boaz married Ruth. And this is very, very important because Ruth and Boaz had a son named Obed. And Obed, when he grew up and had a son, his son's name was Jesse. Sound familiar? Then Jesse had eight sons. His youngest became the greatest king of all Israel, David. So Ruth was the great 
great-grandmother of King David. Very important. Now let's remember, Ruth was not an Israelite. Ruth was a Moabite, a foreigner. God loves everyone equally. He does not love the Hebrews or the Israelites more than the other people of the world. He loves everyone equally. Now, what can we get from this lesson? I see two important things in this lesson. Number one is dedication. How dedicated are you to serving God? Where Will you go where God wants you to go? Or will you, hey, God, I'll work for you, but I'm going to stay right here, okay? Are you telling God what you will do or not do? God wants you to be an open person, open to his guidance. Give everything to him. He'll take care of you. And the second thing is, can you imagine there are many people that have had very hard times, many people who have lost a spouse or have been divorced or lost their home. In paradise, remember, there was a big fire. A lot of people lost their homes. People, they lose everything. How would you react if you suffered a loss like this? Would you blame God? Would you be angry? Would you be bitter? Or would you give yourself to God and trust Him? I want to remind you of a verse I gave to you last week. Jeremiah 29, 11. It doesn't matter if you've fallen, you made a mistake, or if everything has gone bad for you. You lost your job. You lost everything. God has a plan for you, and it's going to be better than what you had before. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. That's one of the most popular verses today. Well, this is the story of Ruth. Next week, we're going to learn all about another woman of God. It's time for worship. Will you follow Jesus? Ruth 1.16 says, Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. All your ways are good, all your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone, higher than my sight, high above my Trust in you alone, in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow.
go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you see, and I give you my tongue to speak your words. My life is in your hands, and Lord, I will follow you all of my days. Where you go, I'll go. Jesus wants you to go and stay wherever Jesus wants you to stay. Okay, let's pray now. Dear Lord, help me to be like Ruth. Help me to be willing to serve you, Lord, and go wherever you want me to go. I love you, Jesus, and I want to serve you all of my life. I want to do everything that I can that you want me to do in your service, oh Lord. And please help me not to be discouraged if bad things happen, Lord, because I know you have a plan for me. And I know that you will give me a future and a hope better than ever before. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. And we thank you, even as children, we can serve you, Lord God. And we can pray now that you would teach us what we need to know to do what you want us to do when we grow up. We just love you, Lord. Help us the rest of this day, everything we say and do bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's uh, our service for today. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday. And make sure you read the Bible and pray. Make sure you do your activities and question sheets and turn them in so I can give prizes. Bye! Please contact Echoes from Calvary, 831-422-2873. For any questions or to obtain a text number or email to send pictures for the contest.